Oops, gotta purge my notes. Gotta have my notes, guys. Double check, make sure we got burritos still coming. I mean, do we? Seems like, seems like it. I mean, I mean, look at your phone. Make sure you have, like, your notifications and shit. This is gonna be like a blooper reel one day. People will be like, oh, I remember when it was quarantine. It says preparing your order still. Oh, that's good then. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Just keep that open so we know that we're gonna get burritos. Burritos. <laughs> At the end of this. I need a burrito. Hello and welcome back, everyone, to another episode of... Not Fighting. I love that we coordinated at the beginning. I actually kind of just... I'm worried that that's going to become a thing. What do you mean? I just worry that it's going to be like a thing from the standpoint of like, we'll do that every time and then like people get used to it or something. Because I feel like it's all... I don't know. Oh, wait, they finish each other's sentences. I mean, we do. I mean, we could. But, like... Oh, Hippopotamus. Not- no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say. No, you didn't. Because <laughs> you know that's not what I would say. No, never. Never. No, no, you're not into random. You're not into weird at all. I outweird you big time. You can, but I've learned to outweird you. Recently, I have done that. And you're like, I don't like it. And I'm I like, I feel like you're killing yeah. the child in me, though. When it happens, I don't like it. Because I feel like. Since we've been married the entire time, I feel like you feel like you've been married to a child. And whenever you outweird me, it makes me feel like, oh, man, I'm like way too much of an adult. I don't want to be married to a child. <laughs> like that, I'm not. That would make you a pedophile. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. You're weird. No, you're weird. Speaking of weird, nice transition, smooth, I'm a professional. Um, we've been talking about like. Basically, like, all different types of folks. Uh, yeah, and I feel like our last episode was very, like, harsh. And I don't mean it as to be harsh. I think that there's a very, like, small Somebody downloaded factor. one of the, the videos on YouTube on the last episode. No one had ever downloaded one, and Jenna got feelings about it. No, no, no. I don't have feelings about it. I just was like, it was kind of harsh because it's like, I don't know. I'm very... I'm harsh, and so I don't want to come, like, but I feel like I'm also nice. If this podcast blows up, like, the the comments will kill you. No, 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 I won't read them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the... I, I won't be, I, can't, I won't be able to allow you to, otherwise, No, like, no, I'll be so self-conscious. <laughs> People say I have wide fingers. <laughs> I do, jiu-jitsu. Do not say, whatever you do, the internet, do not tell Jenna she has wide fingers. <laughs> She's weird about it. I don't care. My fingers are horrible. Remember that thing about Donald Trump? I don't know if it's a real thing or not, but they talk about how he had, like, tiny Small hands or whatever. Hands. Yeah, wouldn't that be weird if that was, like, the one thing that you couldn't deal with? Is like, I just don't want to You can say all the things, but don't wide. talk about my hands. <laughs> don't talk about my fingers being wide. Don't like it. <laughs> so... Today, one of the things that we're going to talk about is something we, I think we might have talked about on the last episode. I think I, I feel like it has a little bit of overlap with the episode where we talked a little bit about um, basically false accomplishments in jiu-jitsu yeah. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to me, it's, it's sandbagging. This is like a really yes. sensitive topic. Yeah, and I feel like, um, I don't know, it sucks because... In a lot of ways, I think that sandbagging, like, it's not your fault, right? It's, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Like, you can't help it. If you're, unless you and your coach have a weird, like, um, or your, like, an relationship. Affair? No, affair? like, a weird relationship where you're just, like, <laughs> telling him when. Affair, no, 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 no. Um, no, it's like if if you have like a, a weird relationship where you can like you're telling your coach when you want to be promoted. It's like I don't know for me, I've never wanted to be involved in that. Like that's not my thing. Like you know, the people in charge will promote me when they Which, promote me. By the way, me. I hate that whenever it. I remember this coming up every now and then. You had somebody be like, "Yeah, I told my professor I don't want to be promoted yet. Like I want another shot at worlds." I'd always be like. I, I don't a I don't know if that's true or not. Like you might just be like trying to like well that's why I'm like, not a brown belt. Like that's why I'm not. Yet. Yeah, like, like I didn't whatever. get my belt. Yeah. But then also <laughs> like if if that is the case, then to me that is like clear sandbagging, right? Like you tell like an instructor like I don't want this belt yet because like I want to win it here first. So 
whether or not I'm ready, I'm like gonna go fight this one. Yeah, for me, um, I don't know. Like it, the sandbagging thing would make me more nervous then I feel like it would be um, more pressure than it would be beneficial to me. Because, like, if you're sandbagging, let's say, like, you've, you're a blue belt and you won Worlds, like, three times in a row. Now, like, what happens if you go out there and somebody beats you? And it's like, you should be oh, a purple yeah. belt, but you got beat by a, a blue belt. And how many you times know, have we like, watched that happen? Me and you personally. We have right? seen it happen we've had before. people that have, like, friends that... They're not sandbagging. They're just like on. You know that they're gonna get promoted next time. There's an, like an opportunity to yeah. promote, and they're competing. And like we're talking right now in the competition sense, but I think this is a larger topic where you're yes, talking about sandbagging. Yes, but yes. I think like we've had friends that have like gone out and lost their first match. Like this is not not just like once, but this is like super super prevalent because I think. Yeah. Something happens where you get like this extra pressure whenever you're like, I feel like I'm supposed to win. Yeah. And for some well, people, and then that's it's good. like you never know who's up and coming, too, because there can be like really good people popping up out of nowhere yes. all the time. So it's like there's just like so much pressure because like you, you're you're not supposed to be in this vision, but I need to win. I have to win, you know. And I think that's one of the things that um, is sucky, too, about all some of the competitions that would like combine the brown and black belt women because like there's brown belt girls that like can that are almost a black belt or I don't know and it's just like but it's like if you're a brown belt fighting black belts it's like you have nothing to lose but if you're a black belt fighting brown belts you're like I can't lose this and it's just like it's this weird like extra like mental dynamic that's well, like kind of weird I remember in Abu Dhabi a few years ago like uh the world pro like uh, uh, Natielli was still a brown belt. Bianca Basilio was still a brown belt. Mm-hmm. But like all the black belt girls knew that they were really, really good. Yeah. But they were still forced to fight against each other. Yeah. And it's like mm-hmm. there's this huge disparity between skill levels between most black belts and brown belts. But those were two exceptions. Yeah. And like and there's always the nothing exception. to lose with them. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're fighting at like a higher level than you know. So it's like you you just go out there and kill it and like give it your all. Where it's like if you're overthinking because like I can't lose to this brown belt, like that's a different. But all all mindset. instructors but are like anyway. really different here, right? Like yeah, you have instructors that like um, well, you don't have to name any names. It's fairly common. Yeah. That like you have instructors that show up once a year at a place, like have very little. Well, that's kind of like where we grew up. It's like where we were, you know, in the midwest and like that's how we came up and there was we had our black belt professor but the the promotions happened like once a year or maybe twice a year when like the bigger names came and did a seminar so it's like yeah the the association head would come and do you know a a a seminar and that was a promotion that in of itself doesn't make like really doesn't matter all that much um but what there's this like real stark difference between that and then also where you have somebody that's basically selling belts where it's like yeah show up be a should i not say that i mean yeah that's very very pointed (laughs) cut to save the name of the person (laughs) that we just named i looked at jenna i was like should i name names and she was like don't name names so everybody's Mm. watching right now it's like what name did he say Mm. you'll know if you know you know i feel like i feel like whatever you're thinking it's that one yeah but anyways you have people that are like (laughs) basically like they won't go to whatever academy that's nearby or anything like that or they won't actually train with people they'll like email some weird instructor from far away and they'll be like yeah i want to be a blue belt and they're like you're a blue belt now for a thousand like you, dollars. Yeah, you you pay enough money, or you you like uh you know attend a seminar, and like then that's what happens. And, and I feel like that happened a lot, like in the smaller jujitsu communities. Like I think that's less and less, but there's a lot of that where it's like, oh, you know, if I just show up to his seminar, then I'm gonna get like a, some kind of promotion over a period of time. Yeah, yeah, especially especially some of the upper belts. And so that like permeates down in some of those places. And then you have the opposite effect where you have yeah. people that are like, I'm not going to be that. So mm-hmm. we're going to do the exact opposite. Yeah. So my blue belts, they're going to be brown belts. Yeah. And, and that's like the thing. It's like you have this chip on your shoulder. So you just hang like hold on or hold your students back. And, and um, that's like, I don't know, like that's not doing any anybody any favors either you know so as a professor i think that that's like you know you're doing a disservice 
to somebody holding them back that much especially if they're a very competitive person because man like if i'm like a real a like if I'm like getting held back and I feel like, man, like I can compete at that next level and then or then having to deal with that like weight on my shoulders of like I shouldn't be in this belt. Like I should like that. I don't know. That sucks. Which I will preface this with like if you're in jujitsu for the promotions, there's not many. And when you get to the end, there's not any more that are left and you got to wait a really long time. I just wait. Yeah. So it's a pretty pointless pursuit. But that being said, I mean, that's something that I always tell people. It's like, oh, like how much until I get, you know, this belt or that belt. I'm like, if you're worried about that, you're worried about the wrong things. Like just get better. And, you know, if you have questions, like show up in class, like make sure people are seeing you, like not just seeing you, but like you know, if you're consistent and if you're there and if you're in your professor's ear, if you have questions and things like that, or like, how can I get better? Like, what am I doing wrong? Those kinds of, like, just always asking about like things to improve yourself versus things to, um, like, how do I get promoted? Like, I think that's the wrong idea. And I think, but we're not really talking about those people because those no. people will probably get held back. We're talking about the people that's like, you should be, you know, uh, the next belt, but but for whatever reason you're not and and that's part of this which i i was accused of sandbagging as a white belt and i had been training for three months i did my first tournament which we talked about in the last podcast like yeah. when you, the very first time you ever did it or no actually i think it was I listening to a podcast you did with uh josh mckinney yeah on his show which oh yeah, was, yeah yeah um for those that haven't listened to it before it's called i, I suck, suck at jiu-jitsu i suck at jiu-jitsu and i was listening to the story of you like when you did your first tournament and after three, four months of training, you went and did the Arnold Classic, which at yeah. the time in the Midwest was like the pretty, tournament. Well, I mean, if you're if you're a female, it was like one of the only tournaments you could actually get a match. Yeah, for right? sure. For sure. And, and what's more, it was like a pretty good sized tournament for like you actually had a weight class as opposed mm-hmm. to just show up and you fight what other like females were there. Yeah. And uh, you got accused of sandbagging. And I'm like, I just started. This is my first tournament. But like, I mean, it was just. It was just a different situation for me. But that being said, like there are a lot of people and we've watched it happen that are sandbagging and that get held back. And there's like one in in particular instance and like I don't know the the details of it because I don't care to know, but I kept hearing about it. It's like, oh, like this person, like they won the world twice at blue belt, but then like they're still not a purple belt because whatever reason and then they got their purple belt but then they weren't like they can't compete now because of the IBGF rules or something and it's just like all this like drama and like nonsense around like the belt promotions in the time and it's like no like the only reason you're in that situation is because you were a D- D1 wrestler and then you were fighting like as a blue belt or a white belt for like two years and then you got caught and then you know those kinds of things it's like no it's like for me, it bothers me because, like, I just want to find it at the best but, level ever. So but, why am I going to hold myself back? But we're talking about competition and is sandbagging yeah, just true, about competition. True. It's not when about competition. Before about like how competition is such a small sliver of jujitsu in so many it's true. different ways. It's true. And I think the sandbagging in um, in competition is uh, like is one thing, you know. And I think that's like the biggest disgrace. But like, there's like also like I don't know that there's a, there's a lot of people that sandbag in like just non-competitive ways it's like they avoid every seminar or they know that the promotions are gonna happen it's like i'm not gonna show up i'm gonna i'm gonna like flake out for like three months now because i know that like i'm getting close to the next belt i just don't want that belt for whatever reason vu i'm talking about you shout out to vu (laughs) but the thing is is like i think that's fairly common with people i think it's I, I think it's really common people feel like, oh, I'm not ready for the next build. I'm not ready. Yeah. And, you know, you and I have talked about this before. Um, somebody that I have the utmost respect for, David Adiv, said a long time ago, like, the belt that you wear is not for you. It's for everybody else to know, like, what your knowledge is. Yeah. And um, the other thing that he told us a long time ago privately was, like, sometimes you have to give somebody a belt so that they get to that belt. Sometimes you have to keep a belt from somebody so that they achieve, like, what they're supposed to achieve. Yeah. And, like... As an instructor, you have to know those times. But the thing is, is like, so different people have different things. It's not up to you. And we talked about this in the very beginning. Yeah. But 
the thing is, is like some people will say like, well, I'm not good in a tournament. That's why like, you know, whatever. I'm not at this build or whatever. But you do got to be kind of good sometimes, right? Like you yeah. can't, you can't just not, you can't, you can't just be like, well, I have all the knowledge. I just can't use it. Like, yeah, that's, that's true. It's like, oh yeah, like uh, I've known people that could probably could explain positions better than I could. Um, and a lot more like just have like this, like, I don't know, this like. And they're like an encyclopedia of jujitsu, and they can repeat everything back. They know every like latest thing that they've that's on YouTube. But when it comes to actually like practical application, like they can't do it. Like it just it's not there. It doesn't connect, or for whatever reason. And um, and so for those people, it's like yeah, maybe you might be held at a certain belt for like twelve years because you're just not getting better. But there's like the other side of that where it's like there's people that you know that that they're right on that cusp of that that belt and it's like man like you just need the confidence like that that getting that promotion gives you the confidence to really like believe that that you're at that level and then they they rise to that level like the moment they get that and like i remember coming up in the midwest like reading uh bio descriptions of guys that like You'd see these academies talking and be like, who's the instructor there? And they'd be like, an uh, assistant instructor. This guy's a pro ball. And you'd see some nerdy looking dude and be like, he's an encyclopedia of jujitsu, even though he doesn't have many accomplishments to his name or whatever. And like, the thing is, is like, you can academically know a lot of stuff, but it's really hard to teach somebody how to do jujitsu effectively if you can't apply it to somebody else. Because, like, let's say somebody is like, Hey, Jenna, I got this problem, and it's that every time I try to do this, the person yanks their arm out or whatever. Like, it's going to be really hard for you to answer their question with certainty if every time you roll with somebody, they do the exact same thing. And you have no clue what happened. Like, what's next? You're like, like oh, here's you never, what it is. You never figured out how to, like, defend against that or and the so, next step. Yeah. So to me, there is, there is this, like, defined thing where you, like, knowledge and practical application meet each other. Um, and so, like... I don't know. Like, I guess, how good do you need to be to get to that next belt? Like, like I, I don't know. At the furthest length, like, how bad can you be and be a black belt, I guess? I mean, I've seen it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking, I've seen like, it. I'm not asking you. I feel like we're talking about anti-sandbagging more than we're talking about sandbagging at this point. But, like, I think it's just about, like, you know, more about, like, promotions and, like, when they happen and how they happen. And I think, you know, for every individual, it's different. It's so different. And everybody's on their own journey. And I know that that sounds, like, cliche or whatever. But it is because you have to look at the person. Like, if you're somebody that's like, wants to be a competitor and you're, like, that's your goal. Like, I just want to be, like, the a world champion. That's my thing. Then you're going to be held to a different level and standard than a person who is just a hobbyist, like, you know, I just do this for fun. This is a way to, like, give myself, like, for self-improvement, to stay in shape, whatever. Like, this is just that, like, a hobby versus, like, I want to make this a career. And I think sometimes you can, like, as an instructor, you can do harm to other students in the academy by sandbagging students. Like, one person comes to Mm -hmm. mind, to me in particular, that I think about. It's in the same way earlier – whoever I named and then we cut out, mm-hmm. it's exactly who you were thinking. In this case, it's not whoever you're thinking of. <laughs> but we know somebody that actually like had a lot of achievements at, I'll just I'm say, a certain belt. Mm-hmm. And everybody knew they should have been at the other belt. But what ended up happening was like they stayed at the belt for three years in a row and they were like world champion or sharing world championships. And the thing is, is like... You know, like, I remember being at Brown Belt and being like, I don't want a black belt until at least that dude gets one because that dude is, like, on another level. Yeah. And that's really discouraging. Like, if you are, like, showing up to Academy every day and you're like, man, I don't – like, that's where you get these people that are like, I don't want – I don't think I deserve that next belt. Mm-hmm. It's because, like, you think of the other – the best whatever purple belt, blue belt at the gym, and if that person is being held back, like, then you're like – yeah. I, don't give me a belt because, like, that dude over there that is way better than me. That guy mauls me every day. Like, like, I can't be outranking them. And it's like, no, like, it's it's different. And that's, the, like, kind of the weird thing about jiu-jitsu. It's, like, where we don't have this um, – there's not, like, a set 
standard for every belt. Like you have to know X, Y, and Z to be at this yeah. belt. You know, it's different. It's like you, there's kind of this generalization of like a practical application, but I think, you know, every association or every professor has their own standards like you mentioned earlier like there's no katas it's not like no like if anybody does have a belt test and this isn't to like degrade belt test because i know a lot of different people like want to just test their students to figure out like make sure that they do know different things yeah for sure but like it's not like you can be like you got to know these moves to be a purple belt or you gotta know because you might be able to know all the moves as a purple belt but that doesn't make you a like no, an and then it's, there's other there's other factors that go into it too. It's like the consistency of training, the the like practical application. Those kinds of things are all factored in. Even if you do have a belt test, like you're not even going to be able to test for that belt if you're not doing those other things, right? I feel like being like, like going through the belts is just is like like a lot like growing up in life. Like I feel like it. Uh, uh, mm. like blue belt, purple belt. It's like whenever you're like a preteen and then like teenager. I feel like if you were to ask me then, like, do you know all the moves? And just to be like, I know all the moves. I just, like, I'm not great at them yet. And then brown belt, you know, like, you're in your 20s and you're like, I knew most of the moves then, but I was, like, not super smart. Like, but I know most of the moves now. But there's, you know, like, I'm going to learn things. I'm wise. And now at black belt, like, it's like whenever you're in your, like, late 30s, 40s. And it's like, I feel like now it's like, I don't know what I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think getting to the black belt is very, like, uh, one of those things is, like, I don't know. There's so much to know. Like, how am I at, like, a black belt, like, where I'm supposed to be an expert, but I'm, like, there's so many things that are, like, I don't even know yet. Well, or I'm still is learning. Well, the thing whenever there's something where you're, like, I've been doing that wrong, or, like, huh, that's how that works, huh? Like, or oh, when yeah. you do truly see something that's, like, new, you're, like, Huh, I didn't know you could do that. That's really simple. Like, well, how well, have bother, I never done but, that? What bothers me the most is, like, the little details of, like, l- certain things. And it might be fundamental. And you're just like, how have I never been shown that before? Yeah. Like, it makes me angry. Like, that's so I simple. I've been every day, twice a day for, like, 15 years and, like, and, like not. Not know that. Not know that. Ah, oh, shit in front. <laughs> <laughs> just like little things but, but that's part yeah. of it too is it's like sandbagging now i feel like is slightly different than it used to be because of things like the internet and because so many people know it like yeah. your journey can be a lot faster now so like back in the day yeah. people yeah would it do- would take like a 14 years to get a black belt you know because that's just like how long it took you to figure out like learn all the things because you didn't have access to it or whatever but now it's like you know you can get a black belt in like six years back in the day it would be like somebody be like a blue belt for like eight years and be like that dude's sandbagging he's been a blue belt for like eight years but now i feel like you could be sandbagging and be a blue belt for like a year where you're like that dude is just lighting everybody up he trains every day like He's getting yeah. great instruction, and it's about the speed that you learn, too. Like, yeah, that's true. This is something that you and I talk about a lot. Like, you learn so much better than me. When you watch something, you're like, boom, got it. Me, it's like, it's, maybe. It's, it's the reason that we fight more than anything in the world is, like, it's the uh, ability for uh, either of us to learn. Like, because we learn at different, we just learn different ways and at different paces. And so, for me, if he's trying to show me something, I'm like, I'm not getting it. Like, he's not explaining it the right way or whatever. And I get mad at him. And I'm but like, for me, your arms are snakes. And I'm like, what? No, just show me how to do it. Let me feel it. And I'm good. And then, like, for you, it's like, you don't, you, you watch something happen. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I think I got that. And, like, got you it. didn't pay attention to the details. You didn't, like, actually get it. And so, for me, I'm, like, very detailed. I'm like, no, they, they said this and this and this and this. And so, I was like, I want to do step by step how it was shown to me. And she's like, it's like and this. Then, and I'm like, and yeah, I got, no, I it. I got and it. Like, you got to no, pretend like his arms are snakes. And I'm like, ugh, I want to punch you because you're not doing it right. You're not even being a, or, or more than, more importantly, it's like, you're not like reacting as a partner how you should. We're okay? getting off topic. But <laughs> Most of our fights in our marriage have been about jujitsu or, and on the mat. But that's the thing is like, you can learn <laughs> at different speeds and it used to be like, because of, you know, even if you had a buddy, you know, that everybody called SA that wasn't Mexican, it was just a white guy. Um, shout out to SA wherever you are now. Miss you, buddy. Um, that guy, like, would bit torrent, like, instructionals off the internet. And you could, like, watch yeah. those or whatever. 
and like that was somewhat helpful but like now you have other people that are doing the same thing you can learn online you have a billion people that academy that probably are like learning whatever type of guard or whatever's in vogue and you can start to like pick those things up and start to use those immediately so yeah. if you're a good learner like you might progress quickly so you could be a sandbagger really quickly there because it's like you have those skills yeah but the thing is is like not everything is like isolated to this bubble because one of the things that i know drives you crazy and it's like whenever relativity and approaches it whatever it is whether it's you know you're a kid or you're a girl yeah so okay let's talk about the um female thing first because that bothers me because there's so many times that i see women get promoted because they're girl. good for a girl and i get it like I understand that there haven't been it's it's a lot harder for a lot of men to understand and like how good a girl is because they're not used to training with a lot of women and so I get it it's like okay you're not trying to use strength or you're not trying to do this with her but also it used to bother me so much and I would yell at my friend um John and I'm just gonna say it because he knows I've yelled at him a million times about it. We when don't he know was which John, like he could be any John. There's a lot of Johns, there. but anyway, he knows who he is. But the I would yell at him all the time when he was training with the, like the other women in our academy, and I'm like, you are letting them do stuff, but you're letting them make mistakes and then still win. And it's like that's not okay. Like I get you're trying to like let them work and do things because you're a lot bigger and stronger and they were lower rank than you, but it's not beneficial to a woman or anyone for you to just let them get away with making mistakes. Like if I'm rolling with somebody that is a lower rank than me and I'm like, I want them to work. I want to like trying to roll at their level and see what they're doing. It's like I, what my, my objective is to capitalize on their mistakes. And so if you're not doing that as a, an, a partner, instructor, it's like you're not doing that person any favors. And so for me, that's what bothered I, me. It's I like that's I, what you would get all the time. It's like girls would get promoted because they're like, oh, they're doing really good. And like they're good for a girl. It's like, OK, those days are long gone. There's enough women training now that thing. you have a standard. That's the thing. It's like it used to be that way where it's like you could theoretically be in a situation where you're like I've never trained with any other girls. There's no other girls at the academy. So like. I don't really know where to put this person as it relates to like, I mean, is do I hold her the same standard that I hold a dude that weighs the same amount or like do I even ask her how much she weighs, like whatever. Yeah. And I think that's fair, but I think this day and age, like there's enough women doing jiu-jitsu that like you should have a pretty good proxy for what the skill is. And yeah. I don't, I mean like you you say all the time, it's like you shouldn't dumb jujitsu down for a female. Like you have no. to account for the fact that like there are maybe differences, but like you can't just be like, well, this person wouldn't be a blue belt for a man, but for a woman, it's okay if they're like whatever belt, you know? Yeah. And that, that's what bothers me. It's like, I get like, for me, there are clear differences between men and women. Women tr roll differently. Like we have just different, like, physical makeups and for and we're just n naturally not built as strong that's not saying that i'm not stronger than some dudes because i know that i am okay i know but it's just like there's natural differences but that doesn't mean that you have to yeah like you said dumb it down like we're not like we're not children you're it's not like you're fighting like a to me, child to me the worst there's part a difference it's not that it happens um, because I feel like sometimes that can be a mistake. It's whenever, and like, I'll say this part so you don't have to, because it's something oh, I've no. observed. Oh, but no. I, oh, no. What about. is he saying? It's not something we talk about. And I'm just going to say it, and then we're going to move on. <laughs> okay. But it's like, to me, the worst is whenever you see uh, a female at an academy where they're just, they're, they're set where I'm the female here. Everybody treats me like I'm special. And like I'm a whatever belt it is, mm -hmm. and it's probably inflated because yeah. they're the only one there, the only one. and they're they're very satisfied with it. They may even know for a fact that like other girls that are the same belt or whatever, like w like are better than them, but they would rather just keep that to themselves because they're happy with the situation where it's at. Now, to me, the opposite of this is kids yes. where you and yes. i both know like I, again we're pretty good about na not naming names in this 
Uh, despite the fact we had to cut some stuff out that I said earlier. <laughs> we don't need to name any names. Don't name but, names now. But in this case, it's positive. I won't name any names again. But, like, we both know, like, some, uh, I think, well. Now a blue belt. N- n- well, we know one that's now a blue belt. Yeah. I, I don't know what the other ones are. But, like, Purple at the, at, at and the, brown, at maybe? The, at the know. time, there was these the green belts or whatever, orange belts, whatever. You can go... You can go and you can find some green belt and orange belts that, that will, will be like beat sl- black belts. That They're are slaying black killing. belts. And not just like, oh, just like some yeah. average, like over the hill black belt. Like world champion black belts, I swear. I've seen it. Swear. I've seen it happen. And, and it's one of those things. It's like, it's not the kids' fault that they're like, because like for in this, in, in most instances, for kids, it's like there are like rules about like you can't get this belt until this age or you have to be training for this long before you can get this belt, you know? So it's like, let's say there's a kid and they're like an orange belt or whatever and then they can't, they can't get the their blue belt until you know they're what like 15 or something is that the age something i think it's like, like 14 or 15 that's yeah juvenile. and so it's like you can't get the belt until that age but but you're clearly better than a blue belt at that point but you so the the, the next standard is like you have to get a pur- uh, blue belt before you can get your purple but no matter what like no one's given black belts to anybody under the age of 18 like no, that's been like no. a really pretty strict jujitsu thing doesn't matter if you're competing or not and there are some kids that deserve that and if you go watch, like... Because, like, how many kids is, like, they they have the same... Like, those kids that we're talking... Like, some of those that we're talking about, it's, like, they have the same years invested into jiu-jitsu as I do, you know? So but the thing is, is, like, you'll see that, and you'll see some kids that are, like, a legit, like, a blue belt kid or purple mm-hmm. belt kid, and they're just, they're just normal. Yeah. But then you'll have these kids that are, like, literally, like we've been talking about, like, just slaying black belts. Yeah. And the thing is, is if you go watch some of these kids compete... Physically, they can do stuff that you can only do as a kid. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, yeah. even at 20 years old, you're like, I can't do that anymore. I yeah. can't invert my hips. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's been kids that I've trained with, and I'm like, thank God that they're tiny, because I've had a muscle Get of stuff. off! Like, Cole, yeah, you try and fly and triangle me a lot. <laughs> Shout out to Cole. <laughs> Shout out to Cole. That's exactly what I'm thinking about now. I haven't rolled with him in probably like... Uh, and he's a lot bigger now, and I'm scared of I him. I know. I haven't rolled with him in like eight months. And last time we rolled... It was rolled, longer than that, I la- think. The last time we rolled, I was like, ugh. The next time's not going to be great for me. He looks a lot bigger and stronger right now, and I don't... I, he's just a blue belt, and I don't want to train with him. Weighed, and I remember like when he weighed half of what I weighed, I remember just thinking like... It's a good thing I can just like scrape him off when I need to, you know? <laughs> like a tick or something. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy and Cole. Um, uh, but uh, I, I think that's a piece of this too. Is like kids. I think that's that's a part of learning. You know, like yeah. I don't think you want to be giving kids black belts in jujitsu. But I do worry a, a little bit about this thing, like terms for belts, like yeah. that we've instituted it from the standpoint of like you know you have the IBJJF, but also people just apply this where it's like, well, they have to be a blue belt or they have to be a pro belt for so long, and yeah. it's like. If somebody's sandbagging already, now you you create an excuse almost for them to like basically be behind. Yeah, yeah, and because it's like yeah, if they're sandbagged already, and then like they get that one, the next belt late, it's like well now I have to wait a year and a half before I can get to the the other belt, and it's like well then you're sandbagging even more. It's like yeah, it's just like this perpetuation of of like sandbagging. And that and you know like. Especially if you're a kid, and let's say you're like a kid blue belt or whatever, like maybe by 18 you hit your growth spurt, and then you're like just this unreal purple belt, let's say. Mm -hmm. Well, now you have to wait, like you have to wait your purple belt term, you have to wait your brown belt term before you can maybe be a black belt, and like it's like three or four years before you can get to the black belt, and it's like now you're you're, you know, maybe not at that same. You've, you've got a lot of miles on you. Like, you're not as young and flexible. And, like, so it's like, man, I've, I'm not going to Or, be like, you're just or ready. Or just whatever. Like you need yeah. that experience yeah. of the black belt. Like, I always tell... Yeah. Like we say, like, we say all the time, like, black belt, that learning curve is steep. And, like, if you're a talented young person, like, you're better off, like, just getting that experience now. Like, you know, um, uh, name and names, uh, uh, our good friend Jake Watson, who... Uh, is he my friend? Well, no. Uh. I mean, oh, God. Is he even a person? You know, like these are all <laughs> good questions. But like, he's like a child that I have to deal with. Yeah, I mean, Jake is kind of talented. <laughs> just to be like, I don't know. I mean, in the same way that like, I don't know. You could leave a mon- number of monkeys in a room and eventually. Stop! Stop! Know. 
but like I Jake, do love you, Jake's Jake. a young young guy, and like you know he was just this young, young dumb, stupid, dumb faced kid, and you know like all of a sudden now he's good at <laughs> jujitsu, and it's like kids ready. Well, he's been good at jujitsu. Kids ready, Since and um, in. and like it wouldn't make sense that to have to hold that person back. Yeah, it's true. Um, and uh, I think this is happening now where you're you're starting to see this thing where it's like yeah. somebody wins a like a world title and they've been at a belt for like three or four months and it's like you're gonna make them wait like another nine months before you you're gonna like let yeah. them compete with yeah. with others. Well, and it sucks too for a lot of those people like um, that maybe get their belt and then I mean this is talking about competition. It's like you get promoted, but it's like a little too early, so you can't start competing yet. Like IBJJF rules that that is, and then, but it's like, but you need those points unless you. I mean, if they won a world title, I guess you don't need it. But it's like if you're trying to accrue, you know, accrue points for like to qualify for these tournaments. Like, well, now it's like I can't compete until this time, like for this amount of time. So you like miss out on those but opportunities. Again, that, but it applies to like this like point oh one percentage. Yeah. So I feel like in reality, I, know. I, think, I just know several cases. So I feel like it makes me sad when I see it happen. But to me, what makes me sad is that these things ultimately, I think, end up being excuses a lot of times. And I, yes. I think the damage that's done is like we were talking about earlier, where you, you're at an academy and you have a bunch of people that are basically like, I don't feel like I'm ready for the next belt. And you feel that way because there are probably people around you, which in many cases is warranted. Like if you're a 41 year old dude and you're like, man, I don't deserve a purple belt because this blue belt kid is just killing me. It's like, you guys are in different places. Like you aren't expected to be able to do the same things now. Like, can you apply the techniques and things like that in certain situations? Great. Yeah, like, like knowledge and like yeah, application are like you, can different. You, can you definitely apply it like when you've rolled with white belts and you rolled? But I belts? think that's the that's the thing that like people get so caught up in, and I think you have to like be be careful in doing this is just comparing yourselves to others yes. because, like I said, everybody's on their own journey, so you don't want to like if you're like I said if you're a hobbyist and you're especially if you're like over you know like a master's hobbyist and you're comparing yourself to this like adult level, like whatever belt person that's like wanting to fight like as like really competitively. It's like, man, don't get it twisted. Like you're in, it's different things. It's different. I mean, like you can even look at it. Like if you're a brown belt and you're like, man, I've been doing jujitsu forever and I probably need a black belt. But this guy that trains with us, it's like a purple belt and he competes at adult. Like he beats me every time we, we train. Like, how can I get a black belt if this guy's still a purple belt? Like, you can't be thinking about things like no. that because there's so, that, that'd be like saying, like, how can I, like, play quarterback when freaking Deshaun Watson's out there playing quarterback? I don't know. That was a really bad But it's just example. about, it's like ability. I mean, like, there's a certain amount of physical yeah. talent that people have. Yeah. It's above, like, you know, like, can you be, can you barambolo, like, white belts and blue belts? Great. You know, like, mm-hmm. does that mean you can barambola Bouchesha? Probably not. Like, no one can. You know what I mean? Does that mean that Bouchesha is, like, unbarambolable? He has the best defense of anybody? No. It just means he's Bouchesha. Like, whenever he decides that he doesn't want to get barambola, he just decides that. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, you might think that you're doing something good, and then, like, just he decides to, like, not let you do that anymore. Not today. <laughs> you know, like, I think I'm going to just beat you now. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's the thing is like I think at the end of the day like sandbagging really comes down to the fact that it's like um, it's more it's more harmful to the people that that like are in proxy to those people because yeah. like they end up not having the confidence in their jiu-jitsu yeah and um, I don't know that there's like any one thing you could say like this defines that or you know whatever yeah um, but I do think we've like kind of like looked at it from pretty much every angle you can. Yeah, and like the bottom line is, is like if you're somebody that's sandbagging, like um, stop it, stop. But like also, like I'm sorry, like it's not your fault. Maybe it's your professor's fault, but you should really ultimately like if you can't trust your professor to pr- promote you. Um, and I feel like the biggest in the issue proper is way. Not- I don't know, but then. <laughs> I don't want to say that because there's so many people that have like the wrong idea about I, I should me, get promoted. To, me, to and, like, me, yeah, to me, it's not it's not a one off issue. Like, no, there may be instances where it's like you and I might agree. We're like oh, sandbagging right there for sure. But it's when it's systemic that, that yeah. becomes a problem. Yeah. Where it's like you can yeah. look at like an entire class of blue belts or an entire class or whatever. 
and you could be like this instructor like all, that's what they're doing as yes. opposed to just one student so yes. if you're like i'm sandbagging i need to get promoted if you're like that person's sandbagging they should be promoted you're just probably wrong you yeah so now yeah. that we've isolated everybody and made everybody unhappy <laughs> this podcast, we want to remind everyone to write a review. Uh, also, like, um, if you, like, you're like, oh, that, like, you guys, like, talked about something that's, like, oh, that eats at me. We're not, we're not being, we're not meaning it in a judgmental way. Like, we're just observatory in, in our, in our statements and our facts. And it's like, I, um love dearly a lot of people in all scenarios of the things that we've talked about not want to see another thumbs down no it's not about that at all i just don't want people to be like oh my god they like they called me out and like i feel really bad about it because i feel like if you think that like we're talking about you and you feel really bad we're probably not talking about you you're you're like conscious of it which is yeah we're talking about the people who can't even hear it and understand that they're them that they're doing that and we'll leave it at that. So we want to thank you for joining us. <laughs> and we hope that you've enjoyed the podcast so far. We're trying to be yeah. consistent. I have two podcasts a week. We're dropping them on Monday and Thursday whenever Ish. I don't delete them on accident, which hopefully doesn't happen anymore. And that's it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Not Fighting. That's a thing. <laughs>